it's a, it's a good moment to do that. And uh, I think Jeremy's got uh, another, another sort of set of stats for us, I suppose, um, which will underline for us exactly what's going on there in Scotland with Labour. Jeremy? Yes. Uh, let me show you something here in the lobby of the House of Commons, the, the members' lobby. And um, we'll have a look at Labour's vote in Scotland. So just follow me over here. And I'm going to... Labour leader William Adamson. He was actually, this is right at the birth of Labour. This guy was Scottish. He was buried in Dunfermline and his share of the vote was 24.2%. So Labour not doing so well, but very much in the early days of the party. This is really interesting as we just follow them right through to the present day. So there we have Mr Adamson. And up next we have 1931, Ramsay MacDonald, checkered history in the Labour Party, 32%. You could see them building here in Scotland. These are all the Scottish share of the vote in general elections. Let's bring on the next one here. And you can see 1945, and that is Clement Attlee. And again, building here, 47.9%. Who's next? Let's have a look. OK, it's Wilson. It's 66. I think they had around 48 out of 73 seats in 1966. 49%. Let's just dwell on this. Nearly 50%. That's nearly what the SNP got in the election in the last 24 hours. On we go. So think of Wilson here, and now 83 in the famous manifesto, which was the longest suicide note in history, and a terrible, terrible time for Labour. 35.1% in Scotland, so coming down off those highs with Wilson, coming down and then going up again. Let's have a look here, nearly at the present day. Here we've got Gordon Brown, 42%, so re-establishing themselves in Scotland, 42% in 2010. OK, one more for you. So we've got those figures, and he sends here with Gordon Brown, he got a stable Scottish vote in the 40s. They've been through the Michael Foote period, they've built, they've established themselves. Now look at what's happened. Ed Miliband here on 24% in 2015. 24%. Now to find 24% or anything like it in this history of Labour's vote in Scotland, where do we have to go? I have to take you all the way back to the beginning. You have to go right back to the very obscure Mr. Adamson here. And his great mitigation is that he was operating right at the very start of the Labour Party when they scored this 24%. After all this time, here we are, 100 years on, they're back where they started in Scotland. That is devastating news for Labour, devastating news for Labour in Scotland especially. Hugh. Jeremy, thanks very much. And, uh... Andy Marr was uh, looking at those figures with uh, with some. In Andy Marr was uh, looking at those figures with uh, with some interest. Andy, I thought, with one exception, which was that we misspelt Attlee, yeah. as in Clement Attlee. That was the standout greatest graphic ex extravaganza. You misspelled Attlee. You misspelled Attlee. Oh. But it was what a really, really interesting graphic that was. <laughs> I, I I'm sorry. <laughs> was it three E's? I didn't see. No, A T L E E. You said double T. Double T. Um, I think in oh, fair, my goodness. In, in fairness, the eagle eyed Charles Clark had spotted it uh, equally quickly, hasn't it, Charles? We spelt foot, correct. Yeah. Also, 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 Mr. Adamson, who was being talked down, yeah. had the biggest ever swing to Labour of any Labour leader, 14.4% in 1918. Okay. Bigger than that. Um, we're going to try... Can we talk to Andrew... If you were going to commission an eight-foot-high stone <laughs> monument, I think at this point, as a pollster, that's what you'd want to have engraved on it. It's an absolutely extraordinary image. This is the exit poll, and you can see how closely that is mirrored in the actual results. If I tell you that at 5 to 10 last night, we were in a state of profound shock. We were deeply scared with the results from this exit poll that we had to take forward and try and apply to the story of the night. We did it. We had complete trust in that God of polling, John Curtis, and this is what happened. Uh, an exact replica of the exit poll shown up in the results of the night. Well, with that in mind, um, can I say, John... Thank you, Hugh. We had a big think before this election about whether the swingometer could still be used and it can it served us very well over the last 24 hours we've had to split it into four different swingometers so we took you inside the elizabeth tower at westminster and the four faces here of big ben now this has actually proved very very useful in analyzing the different terrains the different faces of this election and let me show you why still the main swingometer conservative labor showing you the difference in swing between this election in 2015 and the last in 2010. So here we go. This is England and Wales only, and I'm going to ask it to show us the swing against the Conservatives to Labour. 
and you can see it really is quite feeble there. It's just about 1% into conservative territory. Now, if the swing was applied evenly across England and Wales, these seats would go from blue to red, as they have on our machine, and you see that number there, 12. 12 seats would be gained by Labour. Of course, swing isn't applied evenly. It's not uniform. This is an average here, and it tends to have a patchwork effect. So let's see what actually happened here. And it's very interesting. You can see that Labour gained slightly fewer seats than you might anticipate. Um, they also lost eight as well in England and Wales to the Conservatives. So the net gain was only two, a very poor result. But also some seats just out, way out of line with the swingometer. And these are always interesting in an election. You remember Montgomery's shirt, the last election when Lembit Opic lost his seat, was way off to the side. Here, these two, Vale of Cluid and Gower in Wales, gained by the Conservatives against the run of play. Really interesting. And one that was good news for Labour, a highlight on a very dark night for them. Ilford North, there we are, nearly a 6% swing gained them that. So the Conservative Labour swingometer in England and Wales really helped us to understand the result, as did the next one. Let me show you. So now we bring on, and we've never had this before, the SNP Labour swingometer, and we, we packed it with figures because we were aware of the polls and the potential of the SNP to do very, very well. We've never had it go up to 30 before. It's like the, the amplifier in, in Spinal Tap. Um, but we nearly needed it to go even further. Have a look at what's happened here. So this is the Scottish result in swing. It's a swing against Labour to the SNP. It's up above 24%. If it was applied uniformly, it would colour all of those red seats yellow, which is what the swingometer has done. I'll show you what actually happened, and it's actually pretty much the same. So the, the swingometer then working really, really well, that this average swing is quite a good way of showing what the SNP did. Yes, there was a seat that was 39%, which went right off the scale. And yes, we should mention Edinburgh South, which resolutely stayed with Labour despite everything else that happened. But certainly, you can see from that the SNP's night. And if we ever have a night like this again, we're going to go up to 40, I think, just to make sure we can cover all eventualities. Two more to go. I hope you're enjoying this. It's fascinating for us to see the election through the eyes of the swingometer, 60 years old this year. OK, Conservative Lib Dem. Now, here we see how brutal and ruthless, ruthless British politics is. These are coalition partners, and you watch the way the Conservatives just slashed through these Liberal Democrat seats. There we go, up to nearly 9%. So there are no messing about by the Conservatives here. This was the swing, and on an average swing, were it to be applied evenly, those yellow seats, those orange seats would go blue, and you would see 33 Conservative gains. What actually happened was this. Let's just have a look. Slightly more patchwork effect, 24 Conservative gains, but still absolutely devastating for the Liberal Democrats. And just one more for you. And again, we look rare, rare points of light for Labour here, but this was one with some un an unfortunate um, side story. Lib Dem Labour, actually Labour did very well against the Liberal Democrats who were just folding in all parts of the country, north, south, east and west. So have a look at this, a monumental swing. We actually almost ran out of numbers on this one as well because Labour had a greater swing against the Lib Dems than the Conservatives did and under uniform swing they would have picked up quite a few seats. The problem is that actually there aren't that many Liberal Democrat seats that were vulnerable to that swing because Labour Lib Dems did not go into a position where that kind of swing would transfer many seats. But it's because of the terrain in the election. So you've ended up here with one bit of good news for Labour. They had a good swing against the Liberal Democrats, but it didn't really help them very much. So the swingometer really, I hope, Hugh, helped us clarify some of the forces at work here. Yes, and uh, I thought that for next time, as you say, you may want to recalibrate in some areas. <laughs> but uh, it was dramatic, wasn't it? And, uh, Re it was... Really so, and I think maybe splitting off terrains yeah. helps yeah. clarity as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy, very much. Thank you. While Jeremy was uh, taking us through some of the swings there, some of those record movements in the swingometer, um, we're told that Theresa May is to stay at the Home Office. So this is what happened just a few minutes ago. Um, and Theresa May, who'd gone in, what was it, 10, 15 minutes ago? Not Can't long. Be that long. Not long. <laughs> um, and has now left. So just a couple of minutes ago, so she's on her way back to the Home Office. So. But Daniel Sanford, when we talk to him later, will be able to tell us that uh, uh, she's gone back into the building, into the Home Office, after a long stewardship.